everybody, Pastor Mark here with a, a worship announcement. Uh, I want to walk you through some things about this Sunday's worship, and then probably that'll be very relevant and pertinent for, for some weeks to come. As we are entering into phase two of the Dane County reopening plan, the county health officials have given permission for us to increase uh, the number of people we have in the building at one time. Um, uh, so the risk is still there for the virus and their assessment, but it's reduced in such a way that we're in phase two and we're, we're allowed to, to loosen up just, a, just a, a little bit. What we've decided to do, though, as a session is instead of uh, going back to one service, which we would be uh, technically able to do according to building capacity, uh, what we want to do instead is still do two services, but introduce or reintroduce, I should say, reintroduce singing. Um, and we feel that um, that's appropriate and viable right now, given the fact that we're in phase two and they would let us have more people in the building. Uh, but we're going to say, you know what, we're still going to have a lower amount, lower number of people in the building at one time so that we can maintain the social distancing very carefully. But then we'll, we'll, reintroduce, we'll reintroduce singing. So in some sense, we're... Uh, you know, if they're letting us be a little more risky in one way, we're saying, no, we're not going to be risky in that way, but um, uh, we'll, we'll reintroduce singing, which um, in many people's assessment is, is a little more risky. So we're kind of trading one risk for the other. And we hope in that way, moving back towards normal worship, but again, moving back towards normal worship in a safe and, and reasonable manner that's respecting the, the county health officials and, and that sort of thing. We think we're, we're still well within the realm of um, respecting their, their wishes in, in this regard. Now, for this to work then, and here's the purpose of the video, I want to uh, re-emphasize a few things and, and tell you the way things are gonna work. One thing I really wanna re-emphasize is the need for us in all of this to maintain social distancing. Um, when you come to church, please keep in mind the need to stay six feet away from other family units. So of course, not your own family unit. Social distancing is all about distance between family units. And we really encourage you to work hard to respect that. Even if you yourself don't feel much of a risk and you don't feel that it's irresponsible um, to, to be a little you know, lax about social distancing, uh, we want people that, that are concerned about that to feel very comfortable and safe. Um, you know, we don't want to burst anyone's comfort bubble. And so, you know, the church is a place where we want everyone uh, to feel as comfortable as we can possibly make them. We want to exercise uh, or put out great energy and, and care to make few people feel welcome and, and comfortable. So remember that. You may not be personally concerned about social distancing, but you're doing it for your neighbor and um, wanting to be unified in, in that regard and properly respect other people. So when you come into, near the church door, be careful to not you know, bottleneck it at the church door. Let others go ahead of you. And when they enter the, enter the building, uh, give them some time and space to, to continue on in the building. And then, of course, the same when you're entering, entering here to maybe pause as you enter the building. Um, if someone is standing right at the top of the stairs, you know, don't push up and, and, uh, and violate that social distancing, but let them continue on into the building. Now, let me show you uh, two important things about what we've got going on in, in the sanctuary to maintain our, our social distancing. You'll come in here, of course, and you see the table with the, where the bulletins will be and hand sanitizers and a couple extra masks if, um, if you weren't able to, to bring your own. But then when you come in, if you've, if, you've, if you've been here the last few weeks, we've changed what pews we've taped off. And so what we're doing now, again, to maintain that social distancing so that we can reintroduce singing, is we, we have a pew, but it's separated from uh, the pew in front of it with, it's separated by two pews 
from the pew in front of it. So you see the tape here. So we have a pew, two pews taped off, a pew, two pews taped off, et cetera, et cetera, uh, because we want to be careful about that, that social distancing there. Now, what that means is we really need family units to think, think in terms of their family units, and when everyone comes here, to be careful about where they sit. Um, so here's basically something to think about. If you're a larger family unit, then if you take a pew, you're going to take the whole pew. If you're a smaller family unit, like two or three people or, or a single person, one person, we would suggest that you uh, share a pew, but you do it at opposite ends. So one, fam one couple might, might sit here on this end of the pew. Oh, my phone camera work is not doing a good job. Two people might sit on this end of the pew or kind of in the middle, you know, to maintain distance from them. But the, another family unit, another couple or single person could sit all the way over here on this end of the pew. And so we would have two family units on one pew. Again, larger families are going to need to, to take a, a whole pew uh, for themselves. Now, why am I going on about this? What is this? Uh, whole deal with family units and stressing this regarding, regarding being careful about where you sit on the pews. Well, the reason, again, is to emphasize social distancing, but also taping off the pews like this limits drastically the um, amount of family units we can have attending uh, a service at, at one time. And so we really need... Um, careful consideration about this in order to not only fit everyone uh, that's in our church to come, but then also some visitors. Now, again, if you're uncomfortable coming back to church at this time, that's fine. But we want to work to make sure uh, that you can come back if you are, if you are comfortable, comfortable. And so this is going to take teamwork with all of us. When you come to church, again, you're going to have to be careful about where you sit. And smaller family units, if you could, share a pew with other smaller family units. Larger family units uh, have a pew to themselves. Now, the other place where you need to take care in this regard is in the sign-up sheet. So we're going to have sign-up sheets like we've had. We really encourage everyone, please sign up. If you forget to and you're on the way to church, well, you have smartphones. So I guess in one sense, there's not much of an excuse, is there? Uh, but like, don't turn around and go home. Uh, but please sign up, sign up beforehand. And the way that we're gonna be signing up is we're gonna be signing up according to family units. So no longer individuals, because we're not gonna get anywhere near breaking our individual, uh, individual person maximum in the building. No, it's all about it's all about maintaining the social distancing and how many pews we have for family units. So the Kinzioras, for example, they will sign up as one family unit. And then a couple, right, will sign up, just two people, but they'll still sign up with one slot, one family unit. And so that's how it's gonna be in the sign-up sheet. If you look on the sign-up sheet and you're like, only so many individuals can come to church? That's awfully small. No, it's so many family units. Um, so a single person will take up one family unit spot and uh, an entire family of six will take up one family, one family unit spot. You know, so for example, Byron and Anita Clumpers would just sign up as in one slot as Byron and Anita Clumpers. And then maybe Grace signs up, Grace Campbell, just one slot. And then the Kinzioras and there's, you know, more of them, but just one family unit, because that's the, the limit we're running up against with the way we're doing social distancing in the pews. Okay, I hope that's clear as mud. Now I've got one more thing to uh, give you a preview on so it's not too confusing and distracting when you come. What we're going to be doing is uh, not, not only are we reintroducing singing, but we're going to be taking the Lord's Supper. And we're going to do, be doing this, Lord willing, week after week, uh, not just once a month, but, but every Sunday. And we got to figure out how to do this in a way that is also safe. Um, so at least for this Sunday, and I've, I've been talking to different pastors about different ways of doing this, and I think I've come up with some 
um, good, reasonable ways to do this that really are, you know, we could say uh, COVID safe. But the way that we're going to be doing it for at least this Sunday is by using these individual little communion packets. This is like if airlines were in the business of distributing the Lord's Supper, which we're glad they're not. But if they were, it would look like this. Now, in some ways, these are not really great. It's a tiny wafer and just a taste of, of juice. So our plan is to not be using these long term. Um, but it does appear to be very hygienic. And, um, and so we're going to be, like I said, using them at least for this week. Now look carefully. These will be situated. Let me show you here. They'll be in the little holders, in the communion cup holders, see? Just like that. I'll probably throw these away even though I've, I have washed my hands right before putting them in. But we're going to make sure they're clean before we, we put them in. They'll be, they'll be here, already there when you, when you come in. And you want to be careful with these. Just a little trick so you don't get distracted and make a mess spill, you know, when you're supposed to be looking to the Lord in faith. That would not be good. There's a little tiny plastic tab on the top. I don't know if you can see that. Little plastic tab on the top. You peel that back and it exposes the wafer. Okay? And then the larger tab, which is more like a regular juice tab that you'd be used to, is just under that. Um, so just be careful when you pull it out to first just make sure you kind of peel back so you, you expose the little plastic tab and it's separated from the bigger tab uh, because you don't want to be trying to get at the wafer and rip the juice open and then you can't get the wafer out without spilling the juice and, and that sort of thing. That's the one of the you know not great things about this. But I hope this little intro uh, helps you to, to, to manage that properly. Okay, so that's the rundown. The one last thing is when we're leaving the service, let's please remember to maintain social distancing as we're, we're exiting the building. And if you'd like to talk with people outside, you know, either back in the parking lot or out front, just make sure that those who are uh, leaving the building still have space. Um, and then, of course, you're, you're, you're free to talk. Uh, you can also, of course, talk to people as you pass them here. We just, we're just trying to, sadly, you know, avoid the, the hugging for now and, and, and whatnot um, to, to, look after, to look after everybody as best we can. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was clear as mud. Um, and I hope it gives you at least some sense of what it's going to be like coming to church this, this Lord's Day. We're really excited about having singing and partaking of, of the Lord's Supper together as we rejoice in the, in the greatness of God's love. Um, so I hope if you are comfortable uh, to make it, that, that you can make it, and we'll see you this Sunday.